Alright, so today we're going to be working on camera collisions. Let me just show you what that means. So our guy is going to be able to sort of walk around and whenever we sort of collide with a wall, the camera is going to move forward. Um, or the ground or the ceiling or whatever. Just whenever it collides with the environment, the camera is just going to try and move forward until it's no longer colliding with the environment. This works at all of the distances. So, um, so before we get started, I feel like I should mention this one's going to be a bit short because I have an announcement to make at the end, and uh, I'm actually really looking forward to the announcement. So, yeah, let's just dive right in. So, I'm going to start first by making some changes here. So I'm going to copy this, Control D open up Pro Builder. Let's just grab everything. We'll move it over by one meter. I'm also gonna move it up a bunch, like right there, maybe? Yeah, like right there. It's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna take the edge here, move it over, take the top here, bring it down, then I'm gonna take this edge and just bring it up. we've got ourselves a nice little undercover area. Alright, so before we actually start analyzing a couple things, I'm going to make a few changes. First of all, as you can see, our player is up there, but our camera controller is way down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera controller inside the player, reset the transforms, and then inside our camera controller script, I'm going to come up above start and go void awake, and inside here I'm going to say transform dot set parent inside the brackets I'm just gonna type null. Let's just uh, very quickly have a look at how the camera works in game. So you can see that there are some objects that when they intersect with the camera the camera moves forward and it, it kind of makes sure that our player is never sort of occluded by other objects. But you can have situations where these branches and leaves don't have any collision on them, so the camera is actually pretty good at detecting when it's intersecting with walls, but you can see, you can kind of see a little bit of clipping when the camera actually does intersect, just initially, and then after that it's not much of a problem. Now, there is one other thing that the camera does, and I don't think this is going to be something that I'm going to be replicating, because I actually just kind of think it's a little dumb. When you move the camera down to the ground, and it collides with the ground, you just it just stays there and it pans up. Now this is something that we can definitely do, but I don't really like it. I prefer having the camera sort of zoom in to our character. We're not going to do it in this video, but maybe you could just tell me what you think. Like, after watching this video, you know, let me know in the comments what you think. Do you want to do this? Because I can set that up in the next video afterwards. But I just, I, I think it's kind of redundant. I don't see any situation where this would be useful, considering that people, when they play the game, the game and they need to see something big, they usually zoom way out. So yeah, just let me know. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll get back to uh, implementing this stuff. All right, so now that we know what we're doing, let's uh, let's actually start writing it up. So first, I'm going to come up above Options, or maybe down below Options, yeah. So down below Options, I'm going to create a new category here. I'm going to call this one Collision. I'm going to create a new public bool. We're going to call this one Collision Debug. Then I'm going to create a public layer mask called Collision mask. And then what we need is we need a couple of rays. So I need to create a ray called cam ray and a ray cast hit. I guess we only need one ray. Uh, ray cast hit called cam ray hit. Next let's come down to right after late update and I'm going to create a new method. It will be a void camera collisions and then inside here we're gonna set up the ray so we'll go uh, cam ray dot origin is equal to transform dot position and cam ray dot direction is equal to negative tilt dot forward 
In addition to that, we'll just set up a if statement for collision mask or collision debug rather. And inside here, we're going to do a debug dot draw line. And the start position is going to be camray dot origin. End position is going to be camray dot origin plus camray dot direction times current distance. And then the last one is just color. It's just going to be color dot cyan. All right, now I kind of have to open up the player to get the camera rig. I'm going to turn on collision debug. And uh, I guess I will pull the game view down here just so we can see what's going on. I'm going to focus on the player. And let's have a look. All right, so our camera rig pops up, but it doesn't seem like our collision debug is actually drawing anything. The reason why is because we're not calling camera collisions. So I'm going to call camera collisions right before camera inputs. And as you can see, our line is being drawn and our camera rig has popped out of our player. In addition to that, I just want to draw your attention to something. As you can see, the, the point is coming right to the origin. And um, the origin is basically where the picture starts, as far as I'm aware. As, you know, these lines suggest to me that that's where, that's where the picture starts. But I want to extend this a little bit further to help avoid uh, clipping. So I'm going to create a cushion. So right, we'll, we'll put, it, put it right after collision debug. It'll be a public float collision cushion. I spelled that wrong, cushion. And uh, we'll actually set it equal to like 3.5. Nope, that's not right. We'll set it equal to 0 0.35 F. And then down in here, inside here, I'm actually just going to create a new float. And we're going to call this one distance. Or, oh, we'll call this one cam distance. Capitalize the D. And we'll set this equal to current distance plus collision cushion. And this will be replacing current distance. All right, so now that we have that, let's actually set up our array. So inside of an if statement, it'll be physics dot raycast. First one is going to be the ray, so cam ray. Then we want to out the cam ray, cam ray, cam ray hit. Then we want to do a float max distance, and that's going to be cam distance. And then the layer mask is going to be set to collision mask. And then we're going to have an else. And basically what we want to do is we want to be setting up a variable that adjusts the distance of the camera if we're colliding. So let's come up back up to collisions. And right below collision cushion, I'm just going to create a float. And we'll call this one adjust adjusted distance. And adjusted distance is basically going to be replacing current distance inside of our camera transforms method. So if the ray is not colliding, we want to set adjusted distance equal to current distance. However, if it is colliding, we want to set adjusted distance equal to vector3 dot distance. We want to start from transform dot position. I guess we could also just go camray dot origin. Then the second position is going to be camray hit dot point. And then we're going to subtract uh, collision cushion from that. All right, now one last thing has to be done before this completely works. Select the camera rig. And inside our collision mask, we need to set this to a layer that corresponds to all of our environment. So we're going to create a new layer for that up here in the layer dropdown. We'll call this environment. And then I'm just going to take the test room and I'm going to put all of that inside environment. And then inside of our camera rig, we'll just check environment and we should be good to go. So 
So now when we move our camera down, it adjusts. Um, we've got a little bit of clipping on the side, but not enough that I'm concerned about. It's pretty much gone almost right away, so. I mean, that's working pretty well. I'm quite happy with the way that's working. And that little squiggly line there is just a debug. Um, I can turn that off. No point in keeping it on here. Alright, thank you for watching the video. This one, just like the last one, was fairly short. The reasoning for that is just I, I kind of want to cut down the size of the videos and maybe make more videos going into the future. So I've been doing like one or two a month and what I'm hoping to do is maybe put out one a week that's like anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes long. So yeah, so next week I'll probably be going over some, some more complex collisions you can do with the camera to solve that clipping problem and then right after that we'll probably do swimming. And then I have something to show you. This is kind of like an experiment. I want to start going into some of the art. I think doing some of the art would actually help flesh out the game a bit and make it feel a little bit more like we're actually making something that'll, that'll be a finished polished product. Obviously no guarantees yet. I feel like we're making pretty decent progress and uh, the fact that I've been able to keep this going on for half a year is just something that's pretty mind-blowing to me. So yeah, here's a sample I have to show. It's um pretty unfinished and I'm kind of just working on how we're going to sort of get a lot of the detail in and how we're going to try and maintain a similar style to World of Warcraft while also using all the tools that Unity has as it, at its disposal. I kind of want to get a finished product before I actually start like putting out the tutorial so that at the beginning of the tutorial you guys can see what the end goal is. But for now I think I'm just going to keep working on this and working on that one in the background and then I'll release it when it's ready. So yeah that'll be going alongside the sort of coding tutorials. So chances are like what I'm hoping to do is sort of overlap them. So whenever I start doing the art tutorials it'll be one week unity, one week art, the other week unity, the other week art. And uh, one final thing about the art stuff. Right after we finish making this crate, uh, I'm likely going to start streaming some art on uh, Twitch or on YouTube. I'm not sure which one yet. Might be YouTube just to make everything kind of like round and so that you only have to go to one place to see these streams. Uh, but Twitch is pretty easy and I already have a Twitch set up so it might also be there. And Twitch has other options for, you know, followers and that kind of thing. So I don't know. I guess we'll see. So that that's going to happen at some point. I'll probably be talking about more updates in the future and uh, yeah, just stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're excited for what's next. Thanks for watching. Super trooper, super trooper, super trooper, and he sells soup.